In many parts of China, this is the new normal. Very few people on the streets and the usually crowded public transport system all but empty. Like here in Shanghai. Every passenger is stopped and every passenger screened for signs of the coronavirus. It's fine. Our temperature was taken both getting on and off the train. Everyone has a mask on. I feel relieved. It may look like a country grinding to a halt, but this is China's response to a mass public health emergency. One week after these drastic measures were introduced, the numbers of infected still keep climbing up. People are anxious. They prefer to stay at home and not to go out on the streets or wear a mask when they go out on the streets. This here is a major tourist destination. Usually this area is quite busy with people walking around, having snacks, sightseeing. Now people prefer staying at home. Nobody really knows whether the measures the government has taken will be able to contain the virus, so people are taking their own measures of precaution, and that means minimizing social contact as much as they can. Elsewhere, a lack of basic necessities and information are eroding confidence in the authorities. In Hong Kong, people have been queuing since 2 a.m., hoping to buy face masks. The Hong Kong government should do like Macau's and say every resident can only buy 10 pieces. That way, every single Hong Kong person could have a face mask to wear, right? As a second plane load of repatriated Japanese nationals touched down in Tokyo, it caused some to wonder what this type of outbreak could look like if it happened during the Olympics here in July. I take it as a wake-up call for us to take precautions against an outbreak like this, especially towards the Olympics. Yes, Japan is naive. I think Japan should step up measures. In South Korea, the government is building a containment facility for those infected. People here fear for their safety. The governor and minister should come here and try to find a point of compromise. What are they doing bringing troops here? Are we in a battle? This is such nonsense. They're really creating a mood of fear. In South Korea, as in many other countries, some residents feel the government's response to the crisis has lacked the apparent intensity and clarity of China's. All right, let's get some analysis on this story now. We can speak to virologist Ian Jones from the University of Reading in England. Hi, Ian. Good to have you here on DW. I want to ask you about the raft of measures that we've seen countries take to try to contain this outbreak. Multiple countries evacuating their citizens from affected areas. We've seen China shutting down or locking down entire cities. Uh, is this the right approach to stop this from spreading? It's the right approach at the current time. Uh, time will tell whether or not it's been effective in either stopping or slowing the progress of the virus. I think as the numbers continue to rise, it looks increasingly likely, likely that this will become a pandemic and will eventually spread around the world. We've seen, as you said, uh, th this is spreading. We've seen first cases reported in the Philippines, in India. These are densely populated countries. Uh, Ian, how worrying is that to you if we look at uh, efforts now to try to contain the spread? Yes, it is worrying for two distinct reasons. One is, as you say, these are very dense populations, so the opportunity for transmission among people is much higher than it would be in a low population density country. But in addition to that, these are areas of the world which also have quite a high burden of respiratory disease, particularly things like TB. And until the virus gets there, we really don't know what to expect in terms of the severity of the infection in those target populations. And you said this could become a pandemic. How dangerous is this virus in comparison to other diseases, other outbreaks we've seen uh, like SARS in 2003, for example? It's certainly less, much less in, uh, serious than SARS. The case fatality rate for SARS was around about 10%. Currently, this is running around 2%. That is still pretty high. It would, at, at that number, it would be almost like the Spanish influenza at the early part of last century. 
However, if it's true that there are many more infected people than the confirmed cases, then the actual fatality rate is somewhat lower than that and more like a seasonal influenza, which perhaps could be coped with more easily by the existing health resources. The World Health Organization is set to decide today whether they should declare this a global health emergency. Should they do so? I mean, what would that change? Uh, whether they should do so or not depends on them and the data that they have at hand, which I don't have. I would guess, perhaps, that on this occasion, they didn't on the last occasion, but on this occasion they will consider it a global health emergency. There's been sufficient spread internationally, I think. And what that would do was just mobilize more resources, would alert barriers at country boundaries and maybe alert healthcare systems that they need to put mitigation processes in place. All right, Ian Jones speaking to us from the University of Reading in England. Thank you for your insight.